One of the hot topics at the moment is the introduction of a mandatory internet content filter. Lloyd, whose job is it to protect us from the dark side of the web? It's really our job. Um, and by our, I mean each and every single one of us. Um, it's not going to be good enough to wait around for governments to move in to protect us online, Andy. It's really up to us to take it into our own hands and do it for ourselves. So what can families put in place now, uh, an easy do-it-yourself solution to, to keep their kids and themselves safe online? Well, the first and easiest thing they can do is to put in place good internet security software. And by that I mean a comprehensive internet security suite, not just the basic level of protection provided by a basic antivirus, anti-spyware um, solution. Um, the extra layers of protection in a more comprehensive package are what's going to pr protect you when you move into the into the sort of areas of chatting online, swapping files online, downloading music, etc., online that kids do. Um, it's also going to provide the extra levels of control that you need um, when you're trying to stop the bad guys getting in and being able to do anything nasty. And somewhere along the way, obviously, our conversation has to take place with your kids. How does that happen? What's, what's the contents of that conversation? Well, the conversation is very much the same as you do in all other aspects of their life. When you talk about taking kids out onto roads, we talk about road rules, etc. Well, if we take kids online, we've got to talk about, you know, what are the things online that are dangerous? What are the things online you've got to be aware of? How do you protect yourself? Um, so you've got to apply all of that, just as we talk about kids when they're walking around in, in the streets to be aware of strangers, and, and we talk about stranger danger. Well, stranger danger applies equally as much in the physical world as it does in the online world. So what's the fine line between having that chat with your kids and blocking websites or blocking access to, uh, to chat programs? Where, where's, the, uh, where's the line that you, uh, you don't cross to make, uh, make an experience where your kids aren't going to rebel against you, um, but they're going to be safe? Well, maybe at certain areas um, and certain times that can be uh, the, the path that you take. But in the history of mankind, I don't think prohibition has ever, ever worked that well. Um, and you've got to weigh up how well it's going to work with your kids. Um, if you try to prohibit everything uh, and alienate them from their peers, etc., uh, that way, they'll simply just bypass and go around you, and there are plenty of ways that they can do that. So you're much better off setting guidelines and parameters, having an open dialogue with them, and setting where the boundaries are, but also setting what are the consequences if the boundaries are overstepped. Okay, and how do you treat kids of different ages? Obviously, your, the conversation or how you treat a, a 10-year-old uh, using the internet is different to a, uh, an older teenager. It certainly is. Um, younger children shouldn't be allowed online uh, in private areas. They should, the computers that they use should be in open areas where you can keep an eye on them, just as you um, would keep an eye on them if they were uh, playing in a playground near a busy road. Um, you know, there are dangers in both situations and you want to be able to keep your eyes on them. And so that's an important thing. For older children, Yep, sure, they're going to be given more freedom and more responsibility of their own, and that'll be a gradual progressive thing. And yes, then they can maybe have the computers in their rooms. I mean, today they're going to have smartphones uh, as they become teenagers, which are computers anyway, and be able to access online uh, pretty much wherever they go. So, you know, it becomes important to start to have had those... Uh, that dialogue with them and have set the boundaries and set the guidelines and, and, and have spoken about what is good and bad. Now, in the, uh, in the instance that um, they come across, uh, the, or you come across uh, some of these uh, darker parts of the, uh, the web, what are some good resources to, to get more information, report problems, um, or basically just you know, learn more? Well, actually, this is an area where the government is really useful. They have actually provided some useful resources for this. Cybersmart.gov.au is an excellent website uh, that's been set up by the government to uh, be a place where kids can go to get information, report problems. Um, so if they're uncomfortable talking to you and discussing it with you, and let's hope that isn't the case, but if that is the case, then that's an excellent place for them to go. 
And what about issues with uh, bullying? There's a special website for that? Yeah, for bullying, harassment, etc. there's uh, another website, thinkyouknow.org.au, uh, and that provides uh, equally good, useful content. And, of course, the AVG website at avg.com.au is also a great resource for internet security issues in general. It certainly is, Andy. If you go to our media section, there are lots of releases about... Um, various tips and tricks for staying safe online in different areas. Uh, if you go into the resources section, we've got a specific security tips area, as well as uh, white papers and other useful information about how to stay safe online.